In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a broken, beat up bench and restore it to something new and wonderful. So essentially, a family friend got a new house and at the new house, they had this bench that was there, but just completely destroyed. The wood was rotted, the metal for the wrought iron is a little bit rusted and uh, they just wanted to get it refreshed. And they got some quotes and somebody called them $250 to do what we're gonna do for about 80 bucks. And most of that cost is really just because lumber prices are insane right now. This really should cost like $40 in normal times. But for right now, we're gonna restore this thing. We're gonna make it look beautiful, get a fresh coat of paint on it. It's gonna look great. And it's gonna cost us about 80 bucks to fix this thing entirely up. Now, as you can see, this thing is three pieces. We have two sides and then we have a back piece. Now, originally I thought this back piece was just gonna screw into the sides, but that's not how this thing's actually set up. Um, there has to be a runner that goes along the back here and connects the two sides. And then this thing kind of screws into that. So that's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, a little bit more work than what I was planning on, but that's okay. The first thing we need to do is get this stuff all cleaned up, get rid of the rust, get rid of any of the rusted on bolts and anything like that, and uh, get some protectant on it. Now, as you can see, there are these threaded inserts here uh, that are just totally rusted through. Uh, so I'm gonna buy some new stainless steel bolts to get those in. We gotta get these out, and I think the best course of action is gonna be an impact driver and a wrench that I'll just clamp down on the wrench, impact drive them out, and get all of that stuff out. I've already done it to one side here, and then uh, we'll go through and wire brush and make sure we get all this cleaned up, and then we'll put on some protectant. As you can see, some of that stuff was pretty gnarly. Uh, there's no point in reusing this stuff. Some of these bolts look okay, some of the washers look okay, but really, uh, there's just no reason to reuse that. I'm gonna get some new stuff there. Uh, our next task here is to go and wire brush some of this area here. They wanted to keep the patina on this, so I'm not gonna repaint any of that, but I am gonna put some protective uh, sealant on it so that it doesn't rust any more than it might have. Uh, but I wanna make sure I remove any of the rust that would have been built up in those corners and those areas uh, down at the feet. So we'll get a wire brush, make sure we take care of those, and then we'll put some protection on there. Now I didn't actually have a wire brush, but I do have a grill cleaning thing that I've never used because I already have one for my main grill. So I'm gonna use this, it's the same, it's a wire brush, it's just uh, in grill form. But we're just gonna go in and clean up all this stuff, make sure they're nice and cleaned up and ready for use here. And this is what I'm gonna be using for, to be a rust inhibitor, just to give this stuff a coat of uh, something to protect it. Uh, basically it says you're supposed to wire brush it, then clean it with soap and water, and it is incredibly flammable apparently. So we're gonna do this outside, uh, but basically I'm gonna put down some paper, put the pieces on top of it, spray them down, let them dry, flip them over, spray it again. We should be good. All right, we got them all sprayed down. Uh, that was really easy. There's not even a shake to the can. You just spray and go. Uh, but yeah, so we're ready to go here. So you need to let it dry. Then we'll flip them over, do the backs, and then we can start cutting the wood. So for our lumber choice here, there wasn't a lot to pick from. All the pressure sheet stuff is gone because it's almost summer, so decks are getting built. Uh, basically, I got some one by eight pine common boards. Uh, they're nothing special, but they'll do the job. Uh, we'll put some deck sealer on these so they'll be weather-wise, they'll be all right. Uh, we have some stainless steel bolts uh, with the uh, nuts, and then there's washers as well, uh, but all stainless steel so we won't have any rust issues there. Uh, but we need to rip these down. I got three of them. Uh, two of them are gonna be used just for the rails for the seating area. Then uh, the ends of them, like this area up, will be used to support the back and then the last one of these three, uh, one of them will be the bottom, the other one will be the curved top area uh, that you'll see here. So yeah, that one I still need to figure out a little bit more on, but uh, that's where we're going with this. Now, after the boards were cut, I had to go through and route them all because the corners on them are really sharp. They'll cut you if you try to sit on or do anything. So I had to go through and route all these. Unfortunately, I don't have a table router and I have this kind of sort of good router that works okay. Uh, so what I had to do is I had to route basically a quarter of it at a time. I'd clamp it down, route part of it, and then go through and clamp the rest of it down and route the rest. Then once all of that was done, flip it over and do the bottom side so that all of the sides are rounded. 
At the end of the day, you get something that looks like this. It works, it just needs a little sanding and it's good to go. The next step was to go in and add some sealer to it. This was a deck one that uh, kind of a sear color. It looks really good with the iron from the metal. Uh, so I went through, this is what it looks like with one coat versus raw and then two coats all the way through. Uh, it dries really fast, it works really good, and it keeps the water out. I really like this product. All right, so the next part of this is gonna be the trickiest part of the whole thing. I have to build a, a rail down here, which that's easy, straight piece of wood, another straight piece of wood to connect this and this to those sides. I'm gonna use dowels to connect them all uh, because they'll be internal, they won't rust or anything like that. But this curve, I have to figure that out, uh, and I wanna try to keep the thickness consistent all the way around. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna do is I have a piece, uh, I have one more piece of one by eight, uh, I already have this part and these guys pretty much sized up, ready to go. Uh, but this area, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the one by eight under here at the corners, uh, trace a line down there, and then I can't find my compass, so I can't really do uh, like offset it and draw another parallel line. So I'm gonna measure up, put the corners at the same spots, uh, and then strike another line, cut that down on the table saw, and then take it to the band saw, and, and hopefully that will work, we'll find out. I'm just using a scrap piece here to keep it level, so it's the same on the front and back. And then this is a six foot long piece of wood, so I'm just trying to get it as far or as close to the corner here as possible. It's close enough, they don't have to be exact, so we can always sand them down a little bit or do different things here, but I'm gonna start off here. By just tracing this out, and we'll smooth all these lines out later, I'm not super worried about that. So we have our corners and that's really all I need to do because I can measure up then uh, the same thickness of all the other boards, which is two and a quarter. And then from there, I'll put this, these things back on there and trace again. And if I plan this out right, we should be good. All right, so I have my line struck there. And uh, if we did this right, we'll find out. We'll be able to do this no problem. So we get one corner lined up, the other corner lined up. And then we just need to strike another line here and we'll take care of all this uh, other silliness with the uh, these raised up areas for the screws later. We're just trying to get this roughed out as best as possible. All right, and it looks like we have a nice parallel spot. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of cover these lines in uh, and then I was originally gonna take this out to the bandsaw and slice it down, but I'm, not, I'm just gonna go straight to the bandsaw here uh, there's no reason to go to the table saw to, to work on this. I can do this straight off at the uh, band saw. So let's get on it. And while I was working on that, I found out one mistake that would have uh, cost me about uh, 12 dollars worth of wood. Uh, I had the line going here towards the edge, but then I had to remember that uh, there's a piece of wood going on the outside of this. It's going to be coming up. Uh, so I need to add on length on here to account for that piece of wood. Uh, so I added on the piece there, added on area down there for that uh, so now I can go through and bandsaw this bad boy out and uh, get ready to go all right so here it is uh, fresh off the bandsaw and some sanding uh, you can see the overhang that I talked about earlier if that wasn't there it would start at this and then I would have to figure out something else because I already have the other pieces cut uh, so then we have that there it follows it pretty good there's a couple areas I need to clean up still and I'm gonna wrap the whole top of this so it's rounded over uh, so there's not sharp edges on there, but yeah, that's gonna work. And then the next step here is I have another piece that I stained already that's gonna go straight all the way across the back there. And then we have little rails that will fit in there. They'll screw into these uh, little inlets here. Uh, and I need to set up the dowel holes for these so that we can do that. Now you can see it really starting to come together. Uh, the next step here is I have all the stuff cut. I still need to stain that and uh, route the top. Uh, but down here on these uh, all these joints, uh, we're going to use a dowel jig to pop basically two dowels in. So one here, one here to give it a little strength. It still screws in from the back everywhere, uh, but I'd rather it just be a little bit more structurally sound. Uh, and I'm still deciding if I want to plane these down a little bit. You see, it's just a little proud of the surface here. I don't think it's going to be anything that you'll notice sitting in it, but I have to wait and see. Uh, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but uh, it's getting there. All right, if you've never used a dowel jig before, it's pretty easy. Uh, essentially, you're gonna draw a straight line that connects the two parts here. And then when you go to drill, 
uh, there's a piece of plexiglass here that has a line. So you line those two up, and then this laying over top, uh, you drill down. There's a collar on here that will show you how far you go. So I'm going to shoot for about halfway through the piece, pop in one hole, and then pop in a second one here. And then you have a hole for a dowel. You do the same thing to the other side. You put the dowel in with glue, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Totally forgot to record drilling the holes, but it's really not that interesting. Uh, essentially what we're doing here is we're going through, we placed the dowels in, drilled the holes up, and I'm just doing a dry fit. I'm gonna be using Type On 3, which is outdoor and waterproof or water resistant uh, for all these joints. Uh, it has a really long set time, it's easy to work with, and it will work great for this. So uh, our next step here is to go through and just kind of fit this all together, which is a real pain. All right, so after a fair bit of fighting, we got those together. Uh, this corner up here wanted to kink out a little bit and we needed to bring multiple clamps in to do it. Uh, so I have to still route the top of this, stain it obviously. I'm probably gonna sand all of this back just to make sure everything's nice and smooth and restain the rest of this. And then uh, just to pop some screws in the back and then cut the bench rails to length and this project's just about done. Now that everything's screwed together, we need to attach the legs that are eventually going to be on this thing. Uh, so all I'm going to do is line this up here. It just has to be close uh, because it's adjustable. The bottom one has a lot, large slot. I'm going to use a center punch to just kind of mark where the holes are at and then I'll drill it out with a drill bit that I'll do a pilot hole and then drill the big thing from the other side so that any splintering or anything is kind of minimized or hidden. Uh, really easy process and uh, then we'll be able to mount the legs and we'll have a standing bench. And here's the bench in its standing view. Uh, I just need to cut the rails for the sides and you can see it's mounted with the stainless steel bolts on both sides and then the bottoms. After cutting the rails, just make sure you go through and stain or cover in both of the end sides so that there's nothing weather-wise that's gonna bother them. Uh, this is a step that's easy to forget but super important because that's where it's gonna rust from and the holes that we'll eventually drill here are gonna be relatively close to this, so the rot will take place a little faster than what it normally would. But after this, all you have to do is drill the holes, put them on the holders, and put the bolts in, and you're done. 